Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Circuit Hub. So today we are going to understand about the step-by-step -step design process of flyback transformer for quasi-resonant mode. Okay, so so we will understand today. We will learn today the flow diagram of transformer design. How will you design the transformer? There is a process you need to follow. So I'll show the flow diagram. I'll also cover the basic definition and terminology. I'll talk about the design specification. So I'll, I'll consider one power supply design and I'll explain how will you calculate your magnetics? How will you do your magnetic designs? Then I'll explain about the core selection. I will also talk about the calculation of inductance and turns based on the AL value. I'll talk about the how will you calculate the power copper loss. I will also talk about the flux density and core loss. How will you calculate the flux density and core loss? And I'll also talk about the bobbin fit factor and I'll I'll okay. So I'll also tell the references where I took I, I, I got these data. Okay. So so this is very interesting video. I I request you all please watch the video video till end and you will I'm pretty sure you will learn something. At the end, I'll I'll share this PDF link to you guys and you can you can go through this PDF later on as well. Okay. So let's get started okay so the first step of transformer design is to understand the flow diagram okay so you can see here to start the flow diagram we need to have the specification that is called design specification then you need to pk core based on output power right then you have to calculate the inductance value so inductance calculation and then go for the wire loss calculation right and then flux density and core loss calculation you uh, so at this stage if you find that your flux density is more you can you have to reiterate that means you have to change the code uh, code size and you have to go back again at step number step number 30 year so then again you have to calculate wire loss and flux density so you can see in the case of s so you you will move down in in the case of no you will have to reiterate again okay so let's say for the second time you you have s and then you have to calculate the bobbin fit calculation bobbin fit factor okay so so if bobbin fit factor is not not as per your design spec you have to again change the wire size and, or the filler and you have to go again to calculate the wire loss calculation then again flux density and again bobbin fit factor in in other cases you need to change the core size again you need to change the core size again to to accommodate this bobbin fit factor so in this case you have to go and you, and you have to reiterate from here to calculate inductance value and then further and at the end what will you do you build your own magnetics or transformer and you you test your own magnetic right so this is basically the design flow the design flow how what is what is the process to design a transformer what is if you follow the process you will get the result so this is a particular process you need to follow to design a flyback transformer let let's move ahead and let me talk about a bit of different different terminology which i'll be using throughout this video okay so let us understand the flux density is b and you can see the si unit and cgs unit so in tesla gauss and the field intensity h you can see the si unit and cgs unit permeability is mu mu area is ae length is ler lg so these 
terminology I'll using throughout this video. So just for reminder, if I say B, that means flux density. If I say H, that means field intensity. Okay. So you have to remember this terminology. Let us go ahead. And now it's time to calculate the inductance value. How will you calculate the inductance value for your transformer? Okay. So guys, right now I'm, uh, I'm trying to show you the formulas what formula i'll be using when i i'll go for the transformer design and i'll take one scenario of power supply design okay so at that time i'll be using this formula so at the moment i'm showing you the formula only for your understanding okay so to calculate the inductance you need you have two formula one is L inductance equals to 4 pi into n square into area effective area into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by LG plus LE into mu. So where you can see here that mu is core permeability and is number of turns A is cross sectional area of core L is cross core magnetic path length and LG is gap air gap and the other formula you can directly if you know your al value of the core and if you know the your turns number of turns primary turns you can directly calculate the inductance value so the inductance value is directly proportional to al value into the square of turns the square of primary turns okay so this is all about the calculation of inductance and let us let us understand a bit about the core geometry okay so the core geometry if you if you if i said here le le is the magnetic path core magnetic path length so you how will you calculate the le value that means mean magnetic path length okay that is given by pi into od minus id divided by ln od divided by id where od is outside diameter of core id is inside diameter of core n is number of turns a is cross section area and l is l is mean magnetic path length and you can see you are trying to calculate the value of le to find the value of inductance right so if you opt for this formula you need to calculate the value of le so you can see this simple simple diagram here l is the simple calculation with a toroid so this is toroidal core and you can see is how od looks like outer diameter how inside diameter looks like what is a effective area and what is the le okay now let us let us understand bit about ampere laws ampere's law and the faraday's law okay so what is ampere law ampere Ampere's law state that the total magnetic force along a closed path is proportional to the ampere turns ampere turns in a winding that the path passes through okay so if you see here h h is the magnetizing force uh, so h is given by n into i divided by le so the unit of h is ampere turn per meter so you can see where h is magnetizing force n is number of turns l is core magnetic path length and i is peak magnetizing current in amperes now let us see about the faraday's law okay what what it says the total magnetic flux okay you okay the total magnetic flux passing through a surface of a area a is related to the flux density beta the flux rate of change is proportional to the volt per turn applied to a winding if a secondary winding is coupled to to all of the flux in a primary winding then all of the volts per turn in the primary will be induced in the secondary winding lines of flux allow a closed path and have have no beginning or ending in the SI system flux density is expressed in tesla so in the SI system delta phi equals to 1 divided by n and uh, integration of e into d dt so so you can calculate the value of e equals to n into d phi by dt 
and if you replace d5 by dt so it will become n into ae into db by dt and you can calculate your beta value which is given by integral of e into dt divided by n into ae so you can see beta flux density and number of turns is effective code area and e is voltage across the coil okay so this is basically e and this is basically a voltage across coil now let me explain a bit about the bh curves so i will not cover here how will you plot your bh curve okay so you can see here this is the field intensity and this is the field density so h max is intensity and beta is density and you see here this is beta ac this is peak to peak value of magnetic field density and you can see here your curve got flattened that means your core is getting saturated okay so at this point of time your core is in saturation and your transformer will no longer work as a transformer it will work as a simple wire or simple okay simple wire so h is proportional to i your magnetic field intensity h is proportional to i therefore as the peak to peak current in the magnetic field magnetic increases the excursion of the flux also increases at the top of the bh curve you can see b flattens out at this point of time the magnetic field is in saturation once the magnetic field in magnetic once the current in a magnetic drives flux drives the flux to saturation the core no longer exhibit magnetic property and the magnetic becomes now a wire thus it is um, important to calculate the flux density for a given design to make sure that you don't saturate the core beta ac is peak to peak flux density beta is maximum maximum flux density and beta max assume square wave square wave excitation so if you want to calculate the beta ac which is given by the input voltage into t on time divided by ae into np and beta max is lp into ip divided by ae into np you can again see beta flux density np number of primary turns t on on time area effective core area v in voltage and you can also see lp primary inductance and ip is primary peak primary current now let me talk about the core loss so this is important to calculate the core loss also in the magnetic design so the power loss in a core is related to half of the flux density half half the ac flux density of the core and the frequency applied to the core to determine the core loss manufacturer normally provide a graph of power loss as a function of peak flux density of core material okay so beta ac peak is given by beta ac into t now you know what is beta ac i have shown you so you can see this graph they are saying that this graph is the plot of okay power loss as a function of one half of the peak to peak flux density okay so you can see here here you have flux density in empty okay you can see here and you can see here the power loss okay so you can calculate the power loss equals to pv equals to power loss equals to pv into v okay now it is important to understand the permeability and inductance roll off so you can see this kind of plot manufacturer provides you so let us understand what is permeability and what is the inductance roll off as current increased in the magnetic okay and the flux density get closer to the core saturation the permeability start to roll off permeability is an important parameter because as permeability rolls off the inductor decreases as shown in the figure here if the inductance decreases the peak to peak current goes up in the magnetic this causes the flux density to to increase and push the core closer to the saturation therefore 
permeability can be caused a snowball effect as the core gets closer to the saturation now let us understand about the design specification now i'm considering one power supply design and i will show you how will you calculate the transformer how will you design the transformer how will you calculate each and every parameter of transformer so let us understand first design specification okay so let us say you are selecting the topology is quasi resonant for live act main output power is 10 watt the switching frequency you are considering here is 140 kilohertz if you talk about the input specification your maximum input voltage is 85 okay your maximum input minimum input voltage is 85 maximum 265 you can calculate the primary peak current is 1.15 ampere and the primary rms current is 0.425 ampere and if you talk about the output specification you can see your secondary output voltage is 5 volt secondary peak current is 13.8 ampere let's say and secondary rms current is 5.3 ampere bias voltage is 16 volt bias current is 50 milli ampere and you have given the primary inductance value is 190 micro henry leakage inductance is 3.8 micro henry and primary to secondary terms ratio is 12 okay let us go ahead now i have shown in the float chart how will you select the core based on your power rating so core selection is based on the size material and gap these factors work together to determine the core loss and inductance per turn of the core so let us say for our application for 0 to 10 watt i'll i i will select the core among these so efd to efd 15 core sw 16 core ef 16 core epc 617 ee 19 efd 20 sorry this was efd 15 EFPC 25, EFT 25 and you now if you your design have 10 to 20 watt you can select the core among these and if your design have 20 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 70, even 70 to 100 you can select the core um, among these okay now let me let me move ahead and for 10 watt application I have chosen the below core so let us consider part number is EFD20, okay, 3F3 material, manufacturer is Ferro X cube, core name EFD20, material name 3F3 and you can find the AL value which is 82 into 10 to the power minus value. So note the AL is, AL required is not standard, the core gap had to be custom cut to obtain the necessary AL. So now how will you calculate the inductance value okay so now i'll uh, how will you calculate the turns based on al so you can calculate the turns np equals to primary turns equals to lp divided by al square root okay so i i have calculated this and i found that np is 48 and ns is 4 i use these two formula ns equals to np divided by turns ratio since I have the value of turns ratio, I can calculate the NS. Now, how will you calculate the calculate the copper loss? So you can see current density J is a rule of thumb that says a wire should not handle any more than 400 ampere current per centimeter square. Okay, so J is your current density. Now you can calculate the primary wire area. And you can also calculate the skin depth at 100 degree centigrade. So how will you calculate? To calculate the primary wire area, you need to use this formula. I primary RMS divided by current density and skin depth at 100 is 7.6 divided by frequency. So guys, until now, what you have done? Okay. So you got your design specification based on your design specification you have selected the core and then you have you have selected the core and you choose the manufacturer you choose the material you choose the core etc you have the AL value then you calculated the primary turns and the secondary turns you have also calculated the copper loss okay 
so by using this two formula i already explained this now it's time to calculate how will you de define your wire size okay so it is important to calculate your wire gauge or wire size okay so to calculate the wire size you need to calculate the annular inner ring area okay at 100 degree so since we have not yet any uh, determine the correct wire gauge so calculate from 26 to 32 so i have calculated the wire gauge for starting from 26 to let's say here 32 okay so when the skin depth is greater than the radius of the wire we must set the ring area equal to the area okay so you can see here for awg 26 28 30 32 you have the copper diameter which is given in centimeter okay okay and it it's also given the ohm per centimeter at 100 and you can use this formula r skin and you can calculate the annular inner ring once you got the value of annular inner ring you you can also determine the wire resistance due to the skin effect which is given which is given here you can see you can see here it is given ohms per centimeter okay now you can determine the number of primary wires in parallel number of primary wires in parallel required so by using this formula you can calculate the number of primary wire which is needed to be connected to be connected in the parallel okay so you can use these two formula and you can calculate and moving ahead then you have to also calculate the secondary wire age of awg and losses you can see here i have already calculated the secondary wire area number of wires secondary number of copper likewise and you can also calculate the the bias wire awg and losses by using this formula and this now let us understand more about to calculate the flux density and core loss okay so you 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 have to calculate the flux density beta ac okay so so you for that you need to get the core factor you need to have the effective volume the effective length effective area minimum area mass of the core half and then you can calculate this beta ac value and beta maximum value so as i already explained for the ferrite core the flux density is flux density is 0.3 tesla so you should have some headroom so that your core never reach to the 0.3 tesla your of your maximum flux density to avoid the saturation okay so to calculate your flux density you can use this formula i already explained right the saturation point of for a given core is about 250 milli tesla or 0.25 tesla or 0.3 tesla so the design is about 60 percent of maximum flux okay so you have to consider this now you can see your bh curve you can determine the core loss okay you can determine p core loss okay so it's in what p core loss given by p core into v per meter cube now you can the last thing which you need to consider is bobbin fit factor so you can also calculate the bobbin fit factor by using this formula you have the everything is given you in your data sheet you can see winding area minimum winding width average length of turn area product everything is given for this core the core i have chosen okay now you can see for 26 28 30 and 32 uh, this value you can use directly formula and you can calculate the bobbin factor and you can see here for this calculation the bobbin factor i got 0 0.66 which is less than one so that means whatever design i have done here whatever wire gauge and number of turns i have selected for that particular core and that fits in your bobbin so that's okay that is okay now so now you calculated the core loss you also calculated the magnetic flux density 
and you also calculate the skin skin effect you also calculate the wire losses like the the secondary wire awg and losses everything you you have calculated now you are able to design your own magnetics and you will able to build and test your own magnetics so this is all about the flyback transformer design i will upload this pdf in the google drive and i will share this link in the description so guys you can see i refer this books the power transformer design by h dixon and and i also refer the ferro x cube soft ferrite and accessories to see the some calculation and the code selection so i would say thank you for watching this video thanks for your patience to watch this video for more than 20 minutes if you have any further question feel free to ask me in comment section thank you so much